it's Lee from ColouringQueen.net and today I've got Fragile World by Kirby Roseanne's colouring book to show you. This is the UK edition. You can see it up against his previous colouring book, Worlds Within Worlds. It's the same size. It also has the same sort of cover on it, which is a black laminate and it's not smudge proof. My dirty little fingers have already smudged it. And at the front on that cover is also a decal, which is slightly textured. Now the paper is white and you can see it up against a Joanna Basford coloring book there. That's usually off white. And the illustrations are printed on both sides of the paper. The line art is a dull black. And it's really easy to see. There's 96 pages in this colouring book and there's some great pages at the beginning to test out your mediums. Now, this book features 55 endangered animals. And at the back of the book, Kirby tells you what inspired him to put them in this book. So here we've got the New Zealand bats and they basically forage off the forest floor and they're endangered because rats and stoats and other predators have come into their environment. We've got the mountain gorillas here from Central Africa and there's estimated to be about a thousand mountain gorillas alive today, according to Kirby's little legend at the back of his book. And over here, we've got the southern rock hopper penguins, the Lima leaf frogs. And a lot of thought has gone into this colouring book by Kirby. I'm always really impressed with him, how he has developed as an artist over the years. We've got the ring-tailed lemurs. And here we've got some antelopes that are found in Kazakhstan, Russia and Mongolia. And apparently they once roamed China before they became extinct. Of course, we've got our beautiful polar bears there on the facing page. And even though this paper is a medium quality, it feels a smidge thinner to me than Worlds Within Worlds. It could be my imagination. We've got the chimpanzees. And of course, most of these animals, their main threat is from us, from human beings, from going into their habitat or protecting livestock. We've got the Queen Alexandra's Birdwing Butterflies. Now, if you just wanted to watch a short flip through of this, I do have a short flip through. I'm going to test out some mediums in this colouring book. We've got the Rusky Patched Bumblebees. Don't they look gorgeous? So apparently they thrive in most of North America. And over the last 20 years, their population has dropped by almost 90%. So I like books where you can learn stuff because I don't actually know a lot of this and so this is really good for me. The Great White Sharks, the largest predatory fish on earth and up against these gorgeous mandrels on the other side from Africa. Then we've got the eagles from the Philippines where Kirby is from. So this is called a humphead rassus which I Never heard of that before, but apparently they swim in the coral reefs of the coasts of Asia and East Africa, and they eat hard prey like crustaceans. And they're actually a highly valued commodity, and so fishermen will often poach them. And then we've got black-footed ferrets. I think these look as cute as a little button. Giant pandas. We all love our pandas, don't we? I think pandas are just so beautiful. The only thing more beautiful than a panda, I think, is a baby panda. Now, these are the hippopotamus. And the jaguar. Hooping cranes. We've got the Asian elephants and the forest owlets. The Galapagos Island sea lions. And the tiger from Sumatra, I 
think it is. The black rhinoceros. And this is a type of parrot. I can't remember the name. I think it's... And, of course, the turtle. That's the front cover. This is the hawksbill turtle, which is critically endangered. Type of whale. These double page spreads are beautiful. Now, it does fold down pretty easily. I've only opened this book two or three times since I received it this morning and I was impressed with how flat it is folding down. But other than that front cover, there's not really any doodles that we, you know, know and love from Kirby. And I'm really surprised by the amount of texture in these pages that he's doing now. Look at these beautiful koalas, aren't they fantastic? These are the beautiful red pandas, which are just gorgeous. So many beautiful pictures in here. You can do a lot of things with backgrounds. They're really just beautiful imagery. Kirby really has changed his style so much over the years. And usually I don't really like double page spreads because there's so much work, but I do like this one. I really do. And I think it's actually probably one of his better books. And I really like the ecological feel to it and that he's trying to promote things that are important to him around the world. Isn't this little hamster just adorable? Aren't these just beautiful? It really makes me realise how many animals that I can't identify. Uh, so it's a good education. These are Tasmanian devils from Australia. Tasmania. And I think these are Galapagos penguins. And apparently there's thought to be about 2,000 or less left of those in the wild and at the back Kirby has all of the details on all of the images which I really appreciate and I like learning why he was inspired in order to put these in the colouring book. And that's it for the colouring book and on the back we've got that beautiful Samantran tiger and it also has like a decal on it it's got like a texture I love the colouring on that you could imagine that with watercolours so let's test out some mediums in Fragile World I'm going to try some polychromos first a couple of polys so I might do this one with some polys they're going on very easily. Because Kirby's done so many lines, I feel like I don't need to do much. I know that's really lazy, but hey. They're going on very easily. They're blending out without adding anything else. So I think the polys are a good choice there for Kirby's paper in this UK edition. Okay, let's try some prism colours. They're going on quite smoothly. I'm being quite rough here with them.
The paper's quite smooth, so they're taking the pencils quite well. Now, obviously, I'm just doing a rush job here just to see how they perform. But they're going on quite well and they're smoothing out. So Prismacolors going well, Polly's growing well. I'll try some of the Holbein pencils. They're going on well. They've got like a little scratchy feel to them, but they do go on smoothly, but they do have a, like a little scratchy sensation there. But it's coming out when you add more colour on it. Let's try some intense pencils. I've got Millie hair everywhere. Now I only used a little bit of water with that, but you can see that it's gone on really well. There's absolutely no acrylic on the page, but I don't use a lot of water. Let's see how it erases. I've just got my Tombow eraser and it's taking off the Prismacolor pretty well. There's no damage to the paper. Prismacolor is really hard to erase, so but it is taking it off really quite easily. But it's not getting out all of the colour, but it's still pretty good. The Holbins don't seem to be erasing quite as well as the Prismacolor. But we got there in the end. We got it down a bit more. I, I don't know that I could erase it completely. Oh, here you go. So I got quite a bit off. The intense is still wet, so I'm not going to touch that. And the polychromos. It's taking some of the pigment off. It's still leaving some behind. I might need to put an electric eraser onto it to get more off. I just keep doing this, but it does come back. Oh, oops, broke my rubber. Oops. Now I'm trying to do this fast for the video, but in real life, I'd take a little bit more time. I just wanted to see if it erases and takes the design off and also how far we can get down. The Prismacolor is really stubborn. It's really not taking much off with my Tombow, but it did get it down. So there you can see those little tests that we've done with the Prismacolors, the Polychromos, 
the ink tents and the Holbein pencils and also testing out the Tombow eraser. None of the line art was erased or damaged and there's been no pilling on the paper from the ink tents so once it dries I could probably go over it with coloured pencil if I wanted to or maybe even more ink tents if I was uh, very light. It is only medium paper, it's not watercolour paper so you've always got to bear that in mind and test it out on either those pages at the back uh, that teach you about the animals or the ancillary pages at the front in case you use too much water and make a make a dog's breakfast out of it. So that's it from me. Until next time, stay safe and happy colouring.